Hello everyone, I'm Robin and this is Savor at Home number 85. Now on Monday I posted a short video talking about the same yeast that's used for wine making, brewing, distilling, and baking. It's Saccharomyces cerevisiae and what I have chosen to taste for this Savor at Home tasting completely contradicts what I said on Monday. I am tasting a high ester Jamaican rum produced by Hamden Estates. So how does this contradict what I was talking about on Monday? It's because it's completely wild fermented. The distillery Hamden Estates does not add in any of their own yeast. The yeast and bacteria that ferment their molasses comes from the environment. Now, I'm sure there's some Saccharomyces cerevisiae in there, but there are a whole bunch of other microbes that are playing along here. And to make things even more extreme as far as microbes go, Hamden Estates also adds in dunder and muck into their fermentation or into their wash before they distill it. If you wanna know what dunder and muck is, you can go ahead and watch my video here where I talk about my dunder pit and the differences between dunder and muck and how it's applied in high ester Jamaican rum production. In case you didn't watch that video, in summary, dunder and muck add an additional layer of microbes. They add tons and tons of bacteria. These bacteria are producing a bunch of carboxylic acids or organic acids. And these result in crazy, funky, fruity flavors in the rum. That's because these carboxylic acids are esterified with alcohol and produce esters. So if you ever hear the term high ester rum, it means super funky rum, essentially. Those flavors are going to be funky, but more like funky, tropical, over-ripened fruits. And I'd say Hamden Estates is the quintessential high ester, high hogo, funky Jamaican rum. Hamden Estates produces a wide variety of what they call marks. There's actually eight marks in total, and this just means the amount of funkiness, essentially. They modify the fermentation and the distillation to dial in these different marks. And these marks range anywhere from 50 to 1600 grams of esters per hectoliter of pure alcohol. Yeah, that's their measurement for funkiness, is they're quantifying the actual amount of esters in the rum. The lowest mark, OWH, is sitting anywhere from 50 to 80 grams of esters per hectoliter of pure alcohol, um, whereas the highest mark, called DOK, is sitting anywhere from 1,500 to 1,600 grams of esters per hectoliter of pure alcohol. <laughs> DOK is primarily used in the flavoring industry and not so much in the rum industry. However, if it is used in the rum industry, just a little bit goes a very long way in blending. The mark that I'm trying is right here on the bottle. This is LFCH. It stands for Lawrence Francis Close Hussey. And it is the second mark. On the bottle here, it actually says 231.3 grams of esters per hectoliter of pure alcohol. It's quite a mouthful to say that. On the back of the label, it also says that the LFCH is the Hamden mark um, where it ranges from 200 to 250 grams of esters per hectoliter of pure alcohol. So even the lowest mark at Hamden Estates starting at, you know, 50 grams of esters per hectoliter of pure alcohol is still going to have some funkiness. This is still more than what you think of when you probably think of rum, right? I think often when I say rum, especially to people who are not rum nerds, which is such a small percentage of the population, uh, that they think of things like Bacardi, Kraken, Captain Morgan, 
Yeah, so there's a lot more flavor that you're going to be getting from even the lowest mark produced at Hamden Estates versus these other rums. And when I say flavor, I don't mean added flavor, right? These esters are produced during the fermentation and are transformed during distillation and harnessed during distillation. Whereas some of the other rums that I just listed definitely have some added color and flavoring to them. Another big thing that Habitation Velier really uh, emphasizes is that there is no added sugar, no added sweetener, no added coloring or anything like that. So completely unadulterated, which is not necessarily easy to come by in rum, right? Unless you know what you're looking for. So this is bottled by Habitation Velier. You can think of them as an independent bottler. And they started bottling these batches from various rum distilleries in 2016. And their goal for doing this was to bring a whole lot of transparency to the industry as a way to educate consumers about rum and the rum industry. So every bottle that Habitation Velier comes out with focuses on a specific distillery and a specific batch distilled by a specific still. So currently, Hamden Estates has six different pot stills. Their oldest pot still is the John Doerr, and that's from 1960. What I'll be trying was produced using their Forsyth still, and this is their first Forsyth still that went into production starting in 2010. And you can see the beautiful Forsyth still right here. This is a beautiful double retort Forsyth still. So according to the label, this was distilled in 2011 and bottled in 2018, making it seven years old. Now the entire time it was aged in Jamaica. This is not always the case. A lot of the times this bulk rum gets shipped to Europe and gets aged there where the evaporative losses are much less right? Jamaica is pretty hot, so you get a lot of evaporation happening. And this is said that there was 49% losses due to the angel share. So imagine putting booze in a barrel, and then seven years later, you only have half of it remaining. Yeah, that's what happened here. This is bottled at cask strength. It's 60.5% ABV. Now, before I taste, I want to give a huge shout out to the Patreons. Thank you guys so much for helping to support the channel and for being a part of the community that we have over on Patreon. If you, the viewer, would like to join us over on Patreon, I've got a link in the description below. All right, let's taste. So you can see that there's not too much color. It's got a little copper color to it. Now this doesn't say how it was matured, but often using X bourbon barrels is pretty common in the rum industry. And that does not look like new oak to me. So my guess is that it would be some X bourbon barrels, some used casks. This is just, yeah, quintessential funky Jamaican rum. And if you've never had that before. I will do my best to describe it. It's like yesterday's fruit salad in a nail salon, but all of the lights are just kerosene tiki torches. But once you get past that, there is tons of vanilla and some spiciness too. That spiciness is like fresh grated nutmeg and some cinnamon bark. Okay, so there's definitely some heat, but it's manageable. And once it subsides, there is a wonderful, wonderful creamy mouthfeel. The vanilla and spice comes across immediately. The spice is like an allspice berry. And then there's those fruits definitely tropical fruits. There's grilled pineapple that's like dusted with cinnamon. There's some like fresh coconut meat, some salted caramel and a little bit of grassiness. There's some like dried mango. 
and in the finish there's a little bit of like a bitter orange thing. This is delightful and it might not be delightful for everyone, I will say. Um, high ester Jamaican rums are kind of similar to peated scotches, right? Not at all in the sense of flavor profile. However, they can be pretty polarizing. So there are some rums out there that can kind of ease you into this funkiness of high ester Jamaican rums. Hampton Estates, unless they release the OWH mark, probably is not going to be your entry level high ester Jamaican rum. But if you are someone who truly enjoys that funkiness, that high hogo thing in rums, like this is beautiful. Yeah, really, really well done. I think I paid 90 bucks for the bottle and totally worth the price. I, yeah, yeah. I would like to get my hands on some more Habitation Velier bottles because I'm very excited about what they're doing. I also just love how much they highlight the stills on every single label. It just makes the little nerd in me so happy. So if you enjoyed this tasting, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe, and let me know in the comments below if you want me to do more videos about rums or if you have any questions about rums or if you've tried any Hamden Estates like Rum Fire. Have you tried Rum Fire? So I did some math and I think I figured out an equivalent for this bottle, for instance, 231.3 grams of esters per hectoliter of pure alcohol, what that equivalent is. And let me talk you through my math. Okay, so one hectoliter equals 100 liters. And the density of ethanol at room temperature equals 789 grams per liter. So that means one hectoliter of ethanol, pure alcohol, is equal to 78,900 grams of ethanol. So that means 231.3 grams of esters per hectoliter of pure alcohol or per 78,900 grams of ethanol means that there's 0.2932% esters. This bottle is at 60.5% ABV. That's alcohol by volume. Now I figured out the weight percent of esters per weight of ethanol. So we need to convert from ABV to ABW. Alcohol by volume to alcohol by weight. We again do that using density. Lucky for us, the density of water at room temperature is one gram per milliliter or 1000 grams per liter. We get from 60.5% ABV it equals 47.75% ABW. So if we multiply the alcohol by weight by the percent esters in that pure ethanol, we can get the esters in this bottle, right, in parts per million. So multiply those together and we get 0.14%, which is equal to 1400 ppm. Whether you followed my math or not, that means that I calculated that 231.3 grams of esters per hectoliter of pure alcohol is equal to, in this bottle, because it's dependent on ABV, in this bottle is equal to 1400 ppm. I think 1400 ppm is a little bit easier to wrap my head around versus 231.3 grams of esters per hectoliter of pure alcohol. Maybe, maybe not.